Good evening, Pastor Carter. Good evening. Listen, if you guys are joining us online tonight, please like the video and definitely hit the share button at the bottom left of your phone. We need you to share this live live video on tonight, um, our live and 45 Bible study. And I need you to invite, invite someone to uh, join us on tonight, um, to come and listen in, um, to be a part of the discussion. We do ask that you, if you have the ability, please join us on Zoom so we can have a discussion with others. No camera is required. Um, you can even call in to Zoom, just be on the phone to talk about it. Okay, so we want to encourage discussion with everyone. And if you can't, then I, you know, use your 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 fast fingers in the comments on tonight. We want to hear, we want to see your comments. We want to uh, see you chatting with us um, and really getting involved. And so go ahead and like and share and give us some hearts. If you have the book, give us some hearts and let us know that you are ready for chapter three on tonight. OK, we want to see those hearts. We still need to see the hearts and the fire, even while we're doing this autopsy. We still want to see your hearts and your fire. OK, so we got some hearts in the in the chat on tonight, Pastor Carter. Sister Lisa, welcome to the Zoom on tonight. Amen, Sister Lisa. The Long Ranger is with us. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Christine Moore is with us. Amen. Yes. Good to have all of y'all online tonight. Listen, if you have read chapter three, if you have read, if you have read chapter one, two, and three, uh, let us know that you've read chapter one, two, and three by saying, I've read all three chapters. Amen. That, that's going to tell us a whole lot. And uh, once again, like Sister Carter said, like, share, and tag someone. But let us know that you have read all three chapters. Amen. We want to make sure that everyone has read all three chapters and you have your book. You got your book. So uh, let us begin tonight with a word of prayer. And then we'll jump right in to our, to our book. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you tonight, God. We thank you for another day, another opportunity to share uh, your word with your people, God, but also for us to discuss uh, the autopsy of a deceased church. And God, we are so looking forward tonight to even uh, explaining the words that you have given us. God, we are looking forward, God, to even just uh, fellowshipping on tonight and then rejoicing, God, uh, and then even uh, having a clear understanding of what you are wanting us to see tonight, God. We are going to leave here uh, tonight uh, understanding more about where we want to be and the things that we want to do in the life of Main Street Missionary Baptist Church and in the life of your people. God, if you would be so kind tonight to just just watch over us and cover us, God, even as we have a discussion uh, pertaining to the body of Christ and then uh, as it pertains to Ninth Street. Father, we ask on tonight is that you will give us a clear heart, a clear mind just to do your will. And we come with expectancy, God, to uh, learn more about you, but also about your church. Father, if there is anything that we've said or done that's not pleasing to thine sight, we ask that you would forgive us now of all of our sins that we have committed knowingly and unknowingly in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, we welcome everyone to the, to the historic, the historic uh, Ninth, Street, uh, Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church. If everyone could please just mute all just mute. lines. Amen. There you go. Yeah, we welcome everyone tonight to Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church Live and 45 Bible Study. And uh, once again, our mission statement, I need you to put this in. Everybody, Go ahead and state our mission statement. If you're online, state the Main Street mission statement is saving the lost at any cost. And then our vision statement is a church growing by God's grace. Mission statement, once again, is um, saving the lost at any cost. Our vision statement is a church growing by 
God's grace. Listen, this year, the Lord has given us a new vision, a new vision for our church for 2022. Can anybody tell me online right now, what is our church vision for this year, 2022? I need to hear from you. What is our vision for 2022? Amen. Go ahead and put it in the comment section. What is it? Somebody has already said it online, uh, saving uh, in the Zoom. They said saving the loss at any cost, correct, is our vision statement uh, for the church. But then our vision statement for 2022, what is it? Serving. Somebody said it online. Serving, serve, 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 serve. I should see a whole lot of serve. Amen. So listen, that is our vision for 2022. So Scott, can you tell us what serve means? Just in case somebody that somebody does not know, I know I caught you off guard. Sometimes you got to just, the Bible said, just be, be ye also ready. <laughs> we can't hear you because you're muted. I know, I know. Uh, serve, uh, S is for submit, E is for execute, R is for represent, V is for versatile, and E is for exert. Amen. God bless you tonight. Hopefully somebody uh, has that and uh, they were able to write that in tonight, what serve means. If you got it, Sister Carter, she'll type it in once again, just for you who are online tonight via Facebook Live. And then even for those of you who are on Zoom tonight, once again, we welcome you to the historic Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church. Let's jump right in. Listen, chapter one, chapter one was about vision. Chapter one was about vision and, um, a lot of times our churches, our church perish because we don't have vision. We don't know where we're going, where we're headed. It is vitally important because it is vitally important for all of us to know where our churches are headed, where what direction are we are we going? And so our church, 9th Street, and we can only talk about 9th Street tonight, is that um, our church's vision is saving the lost. No, our church's vision is a church growing by God's grace, but our mission statement is saving the lost at any cost. But this year, we have added for 2022, um, serve. So we know what we want to accomplish in this up and coming year. Sister Carter, if you don't mind unmuting yourself, and we're going to talk, and I think you may have, and I'll mute myself too once you begin talking. But we want to begin just talking about um, what chapter one, and we're going to bring, bring the people up to speed about chapter one, talking about vision, and then we're going to talk about chapter two just a tad bit, and then we're going to walk into chapter three on tonight. Okay, so just a quick recap is uh, chapter one was our introduction where we talked about vision and we wanted to make sure that we all knew the vision of our church, the mission of our church, but vision was simply talking about making sure that we understand what the vision of our church is and what it means to have vision, meaning something that we can look forward to, a goal in mind. Um, and also chapter one talked about why we're going to go through this 12 week process. And the big question was why go through the pain? Why? Because we need to know where we're headed. We need to make sure that we can keep our church alive. So the autopsy simply is finding where the disease is and how we can stop the spread. Uh, slow to uh, chapter two was about slow erosion, slow erosion and uh, slow erosion. We, it, it was real. It was really good last week. It's a, it's, it was all about the fact that sometimes we can be in a situation so long that we can't see the decline that's going on around us. Like nothing changes. Um, we can't see that things are changing. Uh, we see rapid, uh, rapid growth sometimes, but we can't see that sometimes when decline starts to happen, it's always slow and um, very, very um, uh, at a pace of almost like a snail. 
So it's that slow that you can't, you don't even recognize it when it's happening. Happening, And oftentimes we think that the erosion is happening with the facility, but it's not. It's actually happening with us, our ministries, our membership, um, and our outward focus in our church. And so this week, it brings us to chapter three. And this week's chapter is titled, The Past is the Hero. The past is the hero. Good evening, Sister Tammy. Thank you for joining us on Zoom tonight. So this week is all about chapter three. It's called The Past is the Hero. So I'm going to go ahead and begin sharing my screen. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started with chapter three. Okay. Now, are you guys able to see the screen now? It should come up. Yes. There we go. See okay, so and the title of our book, if you are new with us on tonight, is Autopsy of a Deceased Church, 12 Ways to Keep Yours Alive by Tom Rayner. And tonight's chapter is chapter three, The Past is the Hero. Okay, Pastor Carter. All right. The past is the hero. Listen, if you are uh, visiting us by way of Zoom, please, everyone, until you're able to speak, go ahead and um, just mute your phone lines. That way we won't have any feedback. And then if you are making comments, please, we have somebody that's watching uh, the Facebook Live so that they uh, will be able to give us your, your comments as we are actually talking tonight. Um, something that stood out to me uh, via the book in chapter three tonight, talking about the past is the hero. It begins by saying there were several points uh, where these churches could have reversed the decline they were experiencing, but the remaining members in the church refused to see the reality. They were blinded to the slow erosion that was taking place. And before we even jump in tonight, you know, a lot of times we are not able uh, to see what is either taking place in our life because we're in it. Sometimes we're not able to actually see it. We're not able to, to actually um, pinpoint it with our very own eyes and just the way sometimes we're not able to see it um, because we're in certain situations and others may be able to see it because they are out of it. Um, it's the same way for the church. And tonight, some of us are not able to see church. And let's just say church as a whole. Uh, we can't see churches uh, declining or slowly falling by the wayside or slowly eroding because we are in it. And you've been in this same situation. Some of us have been in it for 40 years. Some of us have been in it for 30. Some of us have seen decline even now, um, even for, I would say, 20, five, 10 years, five years. But you're in a situation and you literally cannot see what is taking place because um, it still looks the same to you or um, what has taken place in the past was so, was so great to you that you can't see anything but the actual past. So tonight, what, what we're supposed to visualize tonight is that um, by us being in a situation, sometimes it takes us stepping outside of of that of those lenses and literally looking at what we have and not so much as comparing our now to our actual past. We've been a lot of times we've been focused on what has taken place in the past. And Lord, we thank you for our past. But now we're at this present time in our life or present state in our life and things are changing all around us. But we can't see anything but what church used to look like. 
And so um, you remember the the hundreds of people that may, may that may have been in the choir, the the hundreds of people that may have been in the sanctuary. You may remember even how the deacons used to get down on one knee and pray. You may even remember how the the, the choir used to march in. You may be even remembering how the ushers used to stand at the door and allow every in that not allow everybody to come through those doors running over them you may just remember how they used to be really uniform and now things have literally changed and so our past not saying that uh our, we we can remember our we can remember our past but it's our past that has literally gotten us to our present state and just so happened now our our present state our future is looking a little bit different Okay, so Sister Carter, let's go to that first slide. Okay, you want to read that? The past is the hero. So Merriam Webster defines that past defines the past as the following, meaning a go, just gone or elapsed having existed or taken place in a period before the present. And this is what past means. Now, hero is defined as an object of extreme admiration and devotion, equivalent to the word idol. So when we look at the, when we break down the, and these are our two key words on tonight, past and hero, meaning that we sometimes get into a position where we start to admire, have extreme devotion, or even idolize what used to be our past. I'm going to go to the next. So it's car, just before we move on, go backwards. I need you to tell me right now, and I, those individuals who are online, who are some heroes that you remember? Who are some heroes that you remember? Go ahead, you can unmute yourself and go okay. ahead and begin talking. Who are some heroes? And you can write this in online if you're on Facebook Live, some heroes in your own personal life. Doesn't have to be in the church, but we're talking about heroes to you. Who are some heroes to you of your of your past? My dad. Dad. Okay. Anyone else? My hero was um, the person that came into my life when I was on drugs and took me away from me. In the comments, we got um, Sister King Carter. She said her mo her mother was her hero. Um, and I can say for me personally, it was uh, my grandfather Jack. He was all he's was my hero, still is my hero. Okay. Uh, we have right. grandmother. This is Helena. Her granny is her hero. Uh, Sister Milo says her daddy. Okay. Okay. And that's where we are in the comments right now. Let's go forward. Let's go. Okay. Okay. The past is the hero. This is our summary. It says before we begin to see the results of these autopsies, please keep this perspective in mind. There were several points at which these churches could have reversed their decline. Unfortunately, the remaining members in the church refused to see reality. They were blinded to the slow erosion that was taking place. Most American churches that end up closing do not shut their doors over a single occurrence or a few cataclysmic events. In most of the cases, indeed all of the cases in this study, the issue was a slow erosion over time. Had they faced reality and with God's help reversed course, there would be no autopsy to perform, but they second. didn't. Stop one second, hold on. So,
Think about what this Think just said what to this us. Just Sister Carter, if you can just mute. It said in most cases, indeed, all the cases in this study, the issue was slow erosion over time. And had they faced reality with God's help, reverse course, there would be no autopsy to, ref to uh, perform. Had they faced reality? I want to ask us tonight, what is our reality? What is the reality of church, of church right now? And we can say churches across America, we can say our own personal church. What is our reality? What are we faced with? And there is no right or wrong answer. Just what do you think we're faced with? I think we're faced with the churches have gotten away from gotten away from what the church is supposed to be. They've created their own ideas about what church should be and gotten away from what God's intentions of what the church should be. Amen. Did everybody hear Sister Fryson? She said that we have gotten away from what church, what God's intentions for the church uh, was, was intended to be. And Sister Fryson, I'm glad you said that. Why is it that you think, why is it that you feel that way? The Bible is, is clear. God's word is clear. And, and there are books uh, I don't, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Peter, second person, second Peter, the books up and down through there, they tell you what the church's job is. Jesus tells us what the church's job is. The poor and the hungry you'll have with you always. The orphans and the widows, we're supposed to be there for them, take care of them. They're relying on the government. The government has taken over the church's job, you know, uh, taking care of the orphans, placing them in bad homes, and this and that. And, and if we were in, the, if the church did what they were supposed to do, and and it's not so much as the church individually, but the, the church as individuals, then we wouldn't be where we're at in those type of situations. You know, uh, the, the, we wouldn't have have the old people that don't have anywhere anywhere to go, anybody to take care of them. For whatever reason, the orphans, you know, being placed in these homes with bad people, you know, when we're supposed to be protecting them. Um, so that's why I feel that. Because like I said, the Bible tells us, gives us an outline. It's just like it gives the preacher an outline of his duties, the deacons an outline of their duties, the church has an outline of their duties. And they're falling short. Okay. Amen. Okay. Anyone else? Go ahead, go ahead, Sister Carter. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm just gonna go to the comments really quick, and I, I love your um, your response, Sister Fryson, um, because one of the comments here is, is really good. It it pertains to your first point. We have um, Sister Ernie Racy Mitchell who said we are into entertainment instead of worship, and you said that the church um, is not doing what they've been called to do. Instead, we have our own individual ideas of what church is. That's the first thing I thought about because we want to be catchy. Everything has to be catchy to gain somebody's attention. Um, it's like churches like shopping at Walmart now. I'm going to go find the church that, that fits me. It fits me usually is it has the, the lights flashing, has the music bumping, and I never, I, I was entertained, but I didn't get any word because it just felt good. So that's, that's what I think of sometimes, too. Um, Brother Bernard Franklin says, I think since this COVID, nobody's dependent on God anymore. That's the, you ask the question about what is our reality. Um, COVID excuses are in here. Um, someone said uh, their reality is that it will never be like it was when I was a teenager. Um, another one, our reality right now is that there's low attendance. Another one is decline attend attendance, haphazard worship. Oh, this is Sister Helena. Uh, we don't feel the need to thank God for what he's done for us anymore. We think we accomplish things on our own. And this is our reality. This is the reality of church now. 
I like all of those. And I do, I have another question. Is it, are we afraid? Do y'all think that we are afraid to face uh, our reality right now of where we are, of where the state, the state in which the church, the churches, the churches are? Are we afraid to really face the fact that um, our churches are, are, some are empty, some are, are lacking uh, um, members, some are lacking uh, leadership? Uh, are we afraid? And I'm asking this question bold, and you can give me a bold answer. Are we literally afraid of where we are right now? And I have said, I have said my own personal, my own personal testament is that I am afraid of where we're going to be in the next up and coming years because of what I see currently out of the actual churches, out of us, the people. I am afraid. I literally am uh, because I feel like, um, like, like Brother Franklin. I feel like him. And that's not a good feeling to have when I don't see the young, the young children, when I don't see young adults. And uh, it's uh, our seniors are on a, they're on a, on another, on another scale. But I don't see the, 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 the participation from young people, from young adults. And so when I look at our reality, I'm afraid to see what the church would be in the next up and coming years. Comments from anybody. I'm afraid. I'm, okay, I have a genuine fear of God. Yes. Okay? And what my fear is that there's not enough of that fear out there. Okay, because of what's going on to the churches. Mm -hmm. Preachers Preachers marrying men and getting up in the pool pit and calling the first men. You know, it's a lot of things that are going on in the church. And the fear, my fear is that we don't address the things that God despises. We 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 pacify them in order to keep get them in the churches. We pacify them instead of teaching them what the word. And you know, church is not church is like school. It's not meant to be fun. It's meant to teach you, to prepare Amen. you. And, and that and churches are not doing it. Like Sister Carter said, they're more into entertaining you, uh, uh, pacifying you, you know, telling you that's okay, we still love you. Well, you can still love them, but you, you can't raise your time without, and love them without giving them the truth. Amen. And that's where the church has gotten away from. So my, my fear is that there's there isn't enough fear mm -hmm. we need more fear and that's what we don't <laughs> have we've been comfortable with not being you know even with covid yes there's still no fear mm -hmm. you know they don't want to go to church because they don't want to catch covid okay but but nobody scared to go out there and and, and 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 party and do whatever they want to do and pass it on you know nobody was nobody was afraid to tap the government money as soon as their money stopped, then they right back out there doing what they want to do. I didn't mean to get off of that, but it's kind of just goes together. No fear. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's all I got to say. Okay. I'm like zone. I agree with Sister Tammy. Uh, you know, the truth is, the thing about truth is God's word is truth. It's supposed to offend us. We just take, we wear our, our feelings on our sleeves. And um, we talk about this before we gotta get to a point we just get over it because that's what it's supposed to do um let's get into the comments because uh the comments are really hot right now uh somebody said i think churches are afraid of running off the ones that actually show up now so they just keep doing the same things over and over and and they that never seems to work um brother bernard franklin hill is real but if we don't address the problem then we are all wrong um let's see here um sister kenya said we need to get off the milk it's steak time um and also do people think that hell is real and we have to stop being afraid of hurting people's feelings we have to give them the truth okay also um 
someone uh, also saying here, um, we put time, a time schedule to hold people online. We, we we got time limits. We got time restrictions on everything. Everything got to be this, this time. Got to start at this time. We got to be done by this time. We can only do this. We can only do that. And and uh, sometimes we don't even let let church be church where the spirit can actually move the way it needs to move in the place. So that's where these are our comments right now. I, I um, I'll let you and I am guilty of that. And the re the reason why I'm guilty is because um, at one point we had more people who were online than we had in the sanctuary, and because there were more people online, um, you, if 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 I don't hold you for that 45 to 50 minutes, you bouncing around to somewhere else. That was our reality. Now I've gotten to a point. I could care less if you bounce around or not, because at the end of the day, what I've gotten in my mind is that as a as a pastor, you still have to be fed the word of God. It's your choice if you're going to stay online or not. But here's the thing. You can always come back and watch the replay. So I don't care if church lasts or I'm preaching for 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to get all mine out. God bless you tonight. Okay, so let's pick up. It says, um, and that's why we must look at them post mortem. And these churches that we're going to be examining, that's why we're doing the autopsy. Um, and I love this line. It says, the common thread in these autopsies was that for a long time, the dying churches lived with the idea of a heroic past to which they clung more tightly every year. They held on to things of the past with desperation and fear. And when an internal or external force tried to change the way things were done, they responded with anger and resolution. We will die before we change. And that's exactly what they did. They died before. Can you can you mute yours? Can you can you mute yours? Because I'm getting feedback. I know it's from Chloe, but um, go back to that. Okay. I want to make sure we get this and not rush through it because it's very important. Is that the common thread in these autopsies was that for a long time, the dying churches lived with the idea of a heroic past to which they clung more tightly every year. We were excited. And we people, and let's just talk about now, is that individuals enjoyed the past. We can always talk about what happened in the past uh, because it was good. It was it was it was good for us. It was we saw the church being filled. And then this is what this writer is talking about. Rainer is talking about this church. They held on to things of the past with desperation and fear. The same way we do now is, is what they is what they did. And when an internal or external force tried to change the way things were done, they responded with anger and resolution. No one wants to see, I won't say no one, um, it's hard for individuals to change when, when they can't see that there needs to be an upgrade in certain instances of, of our churches. A lot of us want to hold on to things that if they're being materialistic things, I don't care if there's pulpit furniture, I don't care if that's old ministries, we want to hold on to things that, that, that literally are dead wood. And because we want to hold on to those things that are dead, we cannot, we are not allowing ourselves or the church to expand. 
So we hold on to those things. We we cringe. We 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 grasp them with our hands, and and in lieu of us remembering uh, what 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 the past used to look like, and our reality is no longer it's no longer that because the church the body has it has literally changed, and so because it has changed, there has to be some change in us also. Or we will go, we will be just like, we will be just like that ministry that is literally dying. He goes on to say, we will die before we change. We will die before we change. Sister Carter. I, I just have this because we talk about um, remembering the past. Everybody, we all share this, okay? Where we cognitively remember the past, but um, it's selective. Because if you really think about it, selective is selective memory. If the past, would, what can you remember about the past that was just that great? Because you had some ups and downs in the past too. You really did. And that's the question I want to ask people. Like, was the past actually as good as you remember? Because you had 100 members in the choir, but was there still some hell being raised in the choir? That's the part you don't want to remember because you're having selected memory, right? And so now you're saying, I don't like where the new choir is because the old choir was better. And when you was in the old choir, it wasn't good enough because then you were still thinking about how the old choir was 10 years before that. So what actually, what was it in the past that was actually as good as you actually remember? And you, are you really just having selective memory? Because what happens with selective memory is we only hold on to what still gives us comfort, but will still give us uh, the joy we think that we need so that we don't have to change. And that's just my question for some people. Like, what, what, was, what was it about the past that was so good that you really remember um, that, that, that's keeping you from being able to move forward? Because here's the thing about the past. If we never separate ourselves from the past, then we'll never be able to move on to the future. And all these chapters link up together because... We're talking about the past as a hero, but in chapter one, it was about the vision. And if you don't catch on to the vision now and you just stay in the past, you'll never go forward. You'll never go get to, to like 2022. You'll never get to serve this, this year. You'll never submit. You'll never execute. You'll never represent. You will never be versatile this year, and you ain't going to exert nothing in the church this year if you are going to still keep holding on to what it was. And, okay, I have two things to say. One is the world changes. Okay, back then they didn't have air conditioning, so we're not supposed to put air conditioners in the church because y'all didn't have air conditioning. I'm just saying. So it's nothing wrong with growth and change because the one thing you have to realize is that the word of God never changes. And as long as the word of God is being preached, and that's what you need to concern yourself with. You don't have to come into church after they get through singing and praising God, praise, worship, if you don't want to. But the word of God is being given, then you, you know, what more, what are you looking for? Because the world is changing. We have to change with the world. We're dealing with a different breed of people. So we have to get their attention. And if we can get them in there, then we can get them to hear the word of God. Okay. Second of all, the, uh, I, I, I do not I, I am not delusional because I have remember Deacon Smith Deacon Smith kept around with Sister Betty, but Deacon Smith was just a little bit more slick with it, and you didn't hear about it except from Mama's mouth at the house after church. You didn't hear about it in the streets. So ain't nothing really changed. Since the, I mean, we can remember good old P. Washington. We can remember good old uh, homecoming and stuff. But the world has changed, and sometimes it doesn't allow for those things. That's what we have to understand. You know, old folks, they don't want to change. We, not, I'm old, and I'm set in my ways about a lot of things. But the one thing I do, I am set on, is that if you bring me the word of God, I don't care if Tom, Tom John, and Jane get up and can't sing a key. I'll help them sing and, and, and wait for the preacher to come on. 
you know, it's not, you know, that's all I got to say. I'm gonna stop. I think you made a great point right there. Just Tammy, I agree with you. And you said long uh, the word of God never changes. And there, and here, here go the comments. Uh, Brother Bernard Franklin said, "Do not dwell on the past, but just stay in God's word." And you got to remember, we are not of the world; we are of God. Yes. Um. So, so I agree, uh, Pastor Carter. I, I'll just say this. I don't think it's anything wrong with the past. And like you said, it's a lot of good, great things that we did in the past, but what, what lessons can we learn from walking in, uh, taking that course down memory lane and saying, hey, okay, those were great, great days. Here are some lessons we learned from that. But let's, let's, let's move forward because change is inevitable. We, we can't get around change being present, not even in our church. Amen. Hey, I want you to pick up your book right now. Everybody, if you could pick up your book, if you have it, go to page 19 right quickly. Go to page 19. It says hero is usually a good word. It speaks of a man or woman who has done something remarkable, something courageous, something worth nothing, something worth noting. Men and women who fight for our country are heroes. They risk their lives for our freedom and safety. First responders, uh, first responders like police, firefighters and other emergency personnel are heroes. They keep our communities safe. They protect us. They do so often at the risk of their willing, their well-being, or even their lives. Rainer goes on to say, hear this tonight. I need everybody to pay attention to this because this is very important. He says, I love reading Hebrews. Most Bible editors have inserted the subtitle Heroes of Faith for this chapter. There's Abel who offered God a better sacrifice. Enoch who was taken away before death. Noah who built an ark. Abraham who went where God said even though he did not know where that was. Sarah who conceived at an impossible old age. Isaac, who, who blessed a future generation. Joseph, who remembered the exodus of the Israelites. Moses, who left Egypt for a promised land. And Rahab, Gideon, Barak, and some uh, uh, Samson, uh, Jebetha, and David, and Samuel, the prophets. According to the rite of Hebrews, all of these men and women were heroes of faith because they obeyed God, even though they did not know the consequences of the obedience. They saw themselves as foreigners of this land and life, tempor uh, temporary uh, residents of the earth. Now, this is the part I want you to hear tonight. They sacrificed their comfort their homes, their ways of life, and their possessions because they knew that this life was only temporary, that a better and eternal life awaited them. They sacrificed their comfort. And I need to ask, I'm asking the question tonight, are we, are we, are we, as born again, baptized believers willing to sacrifice our own comfort for the cause of Christ, for eternal life. Because where we are now, it's only temporary. And we've saw all of those individuals of our past in history, the history, uh, the history of, 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 of Holy Writ how they literally sacrifice 
their own personal, their own personal well-beings, their own personal uh, lives for eternal life. Those past heroes, those are the past heroes that he's talking about in this in this book. And we've had our own personal past heroes that have made sacrifices. If the church is going to move forward, we have to be just like the past heroes. We have to be willing to give up something. We have to be willing to sacrifice something. And right now, what, 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 what is it that we are willing to like, what are we willing to give up? What is it tonight? What, you, what are you willing to really sacrifice for eternity? That's a question tonight for somebody to answer online or on Zoom. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to sacrifice? He goes on to say the good old days did not exist in their minds. The future held the best days. They understood that this life is not a time to get comfortable. Come on. <laughs> you know, that's a good question. But for me, a better question is, are you willing to be an ultimate sacrifice? Because you can't get past the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you know? So, I mean, if you're going to sacrifice, I know God, we have to sacrifice for God, for the cause of Christ. But is there a sacrifice that actually I does the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice? No. No. So, you know, how far... Are you willing? To, are you willing to go as far as Christ? I, well, he says, "Pick up your cross and follow me." Are you willing to make that sacrifice for the cause of Christ? Because he giving up cigarettes, it, 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 it's a, it was a sacrifice, but it was for me. It was for my health. You know what I'm saying? And, it, and you, I could, I could easily say it was a sacrifice for God because He needs me here to do things longer, do something for Him. But for me. I mean, I don't know any other what sacrifice would be greater than my life for the cause of Christ because everything else is, for me is superficial. It's 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 it's, it's worldly. It's the it's the world. Am I willing to give up this man because he doesn't see God as I see him? Yes, but is that a sacrifice? Is that really a sacrifice? You know, I, I mean, that's where I'm. I'm at with that question. And when we say when we say sacrifice at in this juncture, because we're 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 basing this off of uh, autopsy of a deceased church, uh, what those individuals sacrificed uh, was 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 for life eternal, and we are not wanting the church. The, the the body of Christ to die um, and because of our present our present uh, standpoint or our present condition and there are some things that we have to literally sacrifice at this very appointed time and so I asked the question what are you willing to sacrifice and I should be should have been more specific in this season, in this season of your life right now, what is it that's keep, because there are some individuals, and we're talking to these individuals who are not, who are not making it an attempt to either be in church, come to church, be online, or what have you. But the churches are dying. Uh, we have churches that, who are dying. Because, and we know that we are the body, we are the church, but the reality of it is, is that we literally have people who are out here dying because uh, of their non-participation, them not being active, active the way that they, they once were. 
So how do, what do we do? What do we, what do we sacrifice to get back to where we once were as, as born again believers? And we're trying to help, we're trying to help everybody tonight. What do we do? Anyone? Well, we, we've got to start to giving back to the church. We've got to step up and give back, not just our 10%, but we've got to give our time. We've got to give our talent. We've got to give our service. Those, and, and those are some things, you know, we don't have time to do this because we got to do that. Well, mm. You know, get a, you don't no, you don't. What you got to do is figure out a way how you're gonna make it to help. That's what you gotta do. That's what's important, you know. <laughs> uh, so that's what I, that's my answer, you, man. And, and what you said was totally correct. And it's 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 all based upon service. It's all based upon service. And that's where we have to get back to doing is serving. And that's in every capacity. That book even begins with the book begins with talking about in the community. That's where that's where we have to be. And so uh, Rainer is showing us if we don't get back to that stage, if we don't per start uh, uh, um, advancing or uh, making headways into the community. And that's where the people are, is in the community, then our churches will die. And you have to be honest with yourself and say that, you know what, that's true. Because we're not there. We're not doing the work that we're supposed to be doing at this very appointed time. And so this is why we have uh, a lack of participation in churches, because we're not where we're supposed to be. And that's out there in the highways, byways. Uh, communities or what have you, and we're not doing what thus says the Lord. So, Sus Carter, let's roll to the next. I'm just going to uh, give you a couple comments really quick, and um, that it is we've become too comfortable. Uh, we need to pick up our cross and deny ourselves and follow God. Uh, we need to be praying for them. Uh, we need to witness, but be ready for pushback because push and the pushback is going to come such as us being talked about and our past being brought up on us. Um, and we have to witness to the unsaved and um, Brother Franklin again and get out and talk. Um, and I just want to make sure we're clear here too, Pastor, as we discuss this book, this book isn't just because of what we've seen since the pandemic. We have to be honest with ourselves. There was slow erosion before the pandemic. Um, and I personally could see it. You know, I can go back. To, we've been at 9th Street for five years and I can go back those five years and start and I can, after reading the, this book, see the slow erosion. So I don't want anybody to think it's just because of the pandemic. The pandemic is, is an excuse at this point to me. It has nothing to do with the pandemic. It's just about the slow erosion of church over time, not just this pandemic. So I want us to be thinking about it from that perspective and not just what has happened in the past two years. Amen, amen, absolutely. Pastor, it all boils down to time. You want to, you know, give your time. You know, if you're gonna serve, it takes time. Mm. Going to church, it takes time. Mm -hmm. And you have to, give your time to, to get involved and want to be a part of the church. Amen. 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 I agree, Sister Lori, and I think that we can't pick and choose what parts of the church we want to be supportive of either. Like you say, it's about, about giving your time. Either you're going to be totally committed to giving your time to every part of church or are you just going to be, again, like we said, a, a, like a seasonal employee, a seasonal member of the church? And the church right now needs permanent employees and not seasonal. <laughs> okay, we're on the next slide. Uh, the next slide says, what is the church clinging to? And I want to read you this. I'm just going to, I'm not going to read the entire story. I'm just going to give you a little um, 
summary of it, and it starts on page 22 in your book. But it says on May 18, 1980, this massive eruption took place. The lava flowed right in the projected path of Randall Truman. Here's the thing about Randall Truman. He wanted to keep his home. He loved his home. It was located at the south end of Spirit Lake at the foot of the mountain. He was, but he was living in the most likely path of volcanic flow. He was facing an almost certain death. Government officials had told him, you need to leave. Uh, friends told him, you need to leave. Um, if not leaving is like suicide. Family members begged him to leave um, lest he would die. But on this day, he did leave. And when this volcano erupted, Harry uh, Randall Truman died. He could not let go of his home, even if it meant certain death. And that's what we've been talking about tonight, the past. Sometimes we can't let go of the past, even if it means that our church will die. So the tonight, the question on tonight is, what is the church clinging to? What is the church clinging to? Uh, page 22 says, uh, sometimes we stubbornly hold on to buildings and rooms um, in our church. Uh, worship styles is on the list. Uh, some, some of us won't even accept the new pastor because we're still holding on to the previous pastor. But there's so many things that are on this list. And while we're holding on to those things, our church is slowly dying. So what is it? that we are thinking to on tonight. I like what I said about, what you said about with the pastors and stuff, because my comment was going to be, we're holding on to the dead. The gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, dead is dead. Let's just keep it real. Dead is dead. And you can get stuck hanging on to the grave. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Just like they said, you say you can't do time in here and out there too. You can't, you can't do time in the grave and out here too, because then you're 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 killing the church. You're killing the people around you. For me, that's what I see. That's how I, I see it. I think you know, the, uh, like the, the, uh, a lot of people are afraid of change. But the most of the people that are afraid of change are the older members, and you have to. Sometimes you have to. You have to win them over. When you can't win them over, you just have to pray for them, because you know that they. You know they came up in an era where they learned. They taught the word of God was given to them, but they. I know it's hard to explain, but like I said, hanging on to the dead. The old folks is gone. Most of the old folks is gone from the churches we remember as kids. Okay, and they built a foundation for us, but they didn't intend for us to stay on the foundation and not build from that foundation. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say. That's that's good. Go ahead, without Sister Lauren. Change, without change, there's no growth. Amen. Amen. Great comments. Great comments. Amen. You know, I I look. I look at um, my former pastor, Pastor G.H. Wade uh, in Wabaseka, Arkansas, and I look at the time period in which our church uh, was at its peak, and Pastor Wade pastored two churches in, in Stuttgart, Arkansas, and then in Wabaseka, and both churches were thriving churches. And one of those churches uh, is still thriving, but then there's another one that's literally slowly uh, eroding or slowly fading away uh, because they are still trying to do things as Pastor Wade was doing them during his time period. And then there's another church that is his other church in Stuttgart is thriving because they've accepted the change. Now it's taken some while, it's taken a while, but they're thriving. And um, we can never let go uh, of history. I think history is good. Uh, all of our former pastors, former leaders, you you never you never forget 
those individuals. But somehow, if you, if the, if like Sister Lorianne said, if the church is going to grow, there has to be some change. And we as, as a people have to be accepting of it. And we have to find things that work, work best for us. That's why it's best for all of us to pray. If you see something, even in our current, in our current, uh, current, current church, current, current uh, ministry, what, where, where you, wherever you are, whoever you are, if you see something that you feel as though uh, would be beneficial to your church or something that is being a hindrance to your church, you need to contact leadership and say, you know what? These things right here, may this may be another uh, 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 opportunity for us. We need to take a look at this, you know, but a lot of times now is not time. Now is not a time to be quiet. We got too many people in church being quiet and not wanting to voice and he, literally not wanting to voice their thoughts, their opinions, your opinion matter. I want to tell somebody this tonight that don't think that their, their opinion matters. It does matter. It does. The pastor, the pastor is the pastor. He, 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 is, he, he, he is the one that God has placed in uh, to, to lead and guide you, but I cannot do it by myself. There, there, there is, there are individuals who, who, who are much, 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 much more smarter than me. He has given you the same knowledge that I have, a, a, the same brain, a brain. And a lot of times our church don't move on because people are not willing to share. And that's why we're here tonight, is that so the, so the individuals may feel comfortable in sharing. What is it going to take from us to, for us to get from point A to point B? And if nobody ever shares and keeps those thoughts locked up in their mind, their mind, then guess what? We become stagnant. And some pastors may not feel like I feel. Some of them may not say that, oh, you, you don't have a freedom of speech over here. I don't believe in it. I believe that you ought to be able to share what it is, however you feel, and I ought to be able to sit and listen, especially if it's going to be beneficial for our church. But I just, I, I do believe this is that closed mouths do not get fed. And so many times we're missing out on great ideas, great opportunities, because individuals are not sharing. And a lot of times you guys know more about the community, you know more about the people than even some of us pastors. And that's reality. And I don't care about what the past used to be. Times have changed. Sister Carter. Great points, Pastor Carter, and I totally agree, especially when you said people know more about the community, especially at Ninth Street, we have a unique situation where we don't actually live in the community. So it's important for our people to talk to us and, and to tell the pastor about what's going on and what and bring ideas to the people that are going to be beneficial to our church. But you brought up a point about history and you said history is great and history is great. But um, that's why we should take when we decide we want to take a walk down memory lane to the past, that we just take some lessons from it. We write down some things that we can remember that it can be a lesson for our future. But don't stay there because you can't let your past have power over your future. If you stay in the past then all you're going to do is stay stuck and stagnant and there will be no movement. And that's how the erosion starts because we can't move past the past. Um, we had, we had a couple items. Uh, I'm going to go ahead into the comments really quick. And I know as our time is wrapping up, but I do want to give these comments out here. Um, uh, Sister Carter says, I think people have wore a mask so long, but the pandemic helped peel the mask off. Uh, Sister Helena Hargrave, some people want the church to die so they can say, I told you so. And we also have to remember that the baton has been passed on. Change comes with new leadership. And when new members come, we're not going to be around forever. And remember, the pews have a voice and all it takes is teamwork. Uh, amen. 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 What time do we have? We are at 8.04. Listen, y'all, it has been, uh, once again, interesting. I love, 
I love the fact of all of y'all coming on Zoom, sharing and talking. Sister Tammy, Sister Lori, and Sister Christine, Sister Lisa, thank y'all so much because, um, you know, it's y'all voice uh, that I want to hear. Uh, so many times in which we are, the times in which we live, uh, not being able to, uh, to, to literally or not having Bible study inside the church and uh, making Bible study, study public to where other individuals might not even want to come to church, but they're online. Uh, this serves as a great resource, a great tool uh, for us to utilize and fellowship and come together. And um, nobody, nobody is perfect. I just want y'all to know that tonight. Nobody is perfect. Uh, all of us are making strides to be who God wants us to be. And uh, I pray, I pray for our church that this book, once again, makes us stronger. You read it with uh, in depth and, and you take some things from it and utilize it. Uh, for the benefit, the benefit of yourself, and then for the church. If you know there are some areas that you are falling short in, uh, that is that that could literally help us as a body. Then you do it. You do it. I just want you to be encouraged. Uh, and this is not to tear us down. This is only to build us up, make us hungry, hungry for for change, make us hungry for for better, more, make us hungry for a shift, uh, even within our own church. Uh, because I just believe that uh, change can still happen in such a positive way to where we make an impact in the in the in the city that we make an impact in our church but also uh, in our neighboring and sister churches there in Fort Smith and surrounding areas and nationwide uh, I appreciate you for for coming online tonight and just uh, and being being keeping it real Amen. We need some real soldiers. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Listen, we're going to close out tonight. If you have a certain prayer request, I ask that you would make that prayer request known uh, to all the prayer warriors and to all those who are online via Facebook Live and on Zoom tonight. I also ask that you will begin now praying for Sunday's worship service. Pray for your pastor in the message on this week. I simply want you to be praying over um, over our our message, but also pray for the messenger and then pray for all of those who are going to participate in this coming Sunday's worship. Listen, these are trying times, but this is nothing that we, we, we have not faced before and we still have the opportunity to do what God wants us to do. Amen. Let us go tonight in uh in prayer and uh right where you are right where you sit right where you stand just know that god is still yet able eternal god our father how we thank you god we thank you tonight for another opportunity to share with your people god by way of zoom by way of facebook live god we are just tonight god we are eternally uh grateful to you god for what you are doing in the life of the main street missionary baptist church and churches all across this united states of america god and all across Across this land and country, God, we are grateful. God, we are we are just expecting uh, greatness to even enter our doors, God, even enter our homes, God, where we sit, where we stand, where we are lying down. At God, we are just expecting greatness on tonight. And God, we thank you for this book. We thank you for the writer, uh, Mr. Rainer. God, we thank you for him. God, we thank you for him being spirit led. God, to even uh, shed light on your churches, God, and your people. Now, God, the words that we have read tonight, even in chapter three, God, about heroes, past heroes, God, we thank you for all of our heroes, uh, former pastors, former parents, God. Uh, those individuals who have played a vast part in our lives, God, we are grateful for, for moms and dads, God, sisters and brothers, God. We are eternally thankful and grateful tonight. God, we thank you tonight, even for the individuals that you have placed under the sound of my voice tonight, God, who have, who have shared and heard a word tonight, God. I am wanting them just to be encouraged, God, and them to fulfill their obligation and mission and vision as a Christian, God, as a saint, as a, as a born again, uh, baptized believer, God, God, I pray tonight, God, that no hard feelings were, uh, 
where where came came to pass tonight, God. But they opened this book, opened our eyes, God. It opened our ears, and then it opened our hearts to to make us want to do better, better for the kingdom, God. Be kingdom builders, and God, I am praying tonight, God, is that the things that we hear, the things that we see, God, they remain as a form of encouragement about uh, of who we can be, and God, where where we have come from and where we are literally headed. Father, on tonight, God, if there is someone, God, that is under the sound of my voice, God, who is literally crying out to you, God, of, of not knowing where they stand in the body of Christ, God, I pray tonight is that, God, you would reveal to them and give them revelation, God, of who they are and what you want them to be. God, I know that every good and perfect gift, it comes from you. And God, I simply know tonight is that everything that you have done uh, right now in the life of our church, God, in the life of, of Main Street, God, uh, the foundation that was laid even before me, God, I pray tonight, God, is that we can continuously, God, to have a rock solid foundation. I pray, God, in the hearts of men and women, God, that their, their foundations tonight be sustainable, sustainable. God, I pray, God, that their, their, their foundation, their belief and trust, their belief and trust in you tonight, God, is 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 high above and so so far uh, uh, into you, Father, and not into man, not into idol worship, God, but literally into you. I pray tonight, God, that people will become bold Christians tonight, God, even where they are, they become bold enough to stand for the body of Christ, knowing God that you have the the you hold the keys to victory. And God, we we want to tell you tonight as we leave here is that we love you for everything that you have done for the things that you have are about to do God even how you allowed your son Jesus Christ to die on Calvary's cross for the sins of this world we are in debt to you and father on tonight God my personal prayer is that everyone that is under the sound of my voice will go tonight go to sleep tonight God on a soft pillow close their eyes but then wake them up right early in the morning giving them a new day to make it right with you. God, we love you and we simply adore you. In Jesus' name we pray and all of us said together, amen. Listen, we love you in the Lord and we want to see you back on next week in the same place, same time. Chapter four, please read it. Please, 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 pretty please read chapter four and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday, Sunday morning.